you know, like to put it in plain practical examinations uh, through a critique of society, where are we at, people? Right? What is this expression of this miracle of forces, of element, a house for a soul? that miracles are brought to life through in the physical realm alone. I still marvel at cities in awe. It's like, wow, man, people do this. They figured it out. They use their bodies, right? And it's the commons, right? Like, as a, uh, it's, it's what we all have in common is a body. No matter what the context of where that body is, it starts there. It is the unifier. A body on a body. And how those bodies are treated and how those bodies perceive themselves and others has a broad repercussion on a planetary scale. And there's an aspect of the body that's out of control for people. They're in a subconscious Contraction, retraction, they forget to be a body. And they're following the trajectory of the broken generational gestural patterns that come with a consciousness. Just like a planet has a consciousness, there's a consciousness that comes with a form. Because it has a function. And as that form distorts, how many generations of men led from their groin, literally, in front of their hearts? There's this story of soul being told over and over and over again on a subconscious reflexive plane. Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Going Out, Looking In, the podcast about the big questions of life, personal growth and spirituality. My name is Maxi, I'm your host and today we are diving into the world of somatics, of alchemy, of poetry. deep personal transformation. I'm speaking with Hunter Torren. Hunter was the leading facilitator of the Hawthorne clan, the group I was in during Sacred Sons Convergence 8 in Los Angeles. He was the tribe leader and therefore he is a men's work facilitator. He is a somatic therapist, a spatial dynamics practitioner, and a somatic alchemist. And in my personal opinion, he's a poet. He's a wisdom keeper of long forgotten modalities of the old ways somebody who deeply understands the space between heaven and earth a very special man I'm very grateful for this conversation and everything that Hunter introduced to my life and to the life of everyone that he, everyone that he came in touch with and in touch with when it comes to Hunter is a sort of a 
a metaphor because obviously he's using his hands as a somatic therapist to heal and to provide connection to yourself and to connect you to yourself. And the world of somatics, as you know, is something that is of very big personal interests of myself because this podcast and those conversations over time have revealed the importance and the significance of somatic therapy beyond just talking, beyond the cognitive understanding of one's suffering and pain. It goes deeper and somatics are a gateway to access these deeper parts of ourselves and to provide healing to these deeper part of ourselves. And so I was very excited to go into this conversation with Hunter and to explore these modalities, but, or, and there's so much more. The thing is just about Hunter that when I'm tuning back into Convergence, there is something he has that can, ah, it's very hard to be described with words. It's an energy, it's a wisdom, it's something very deep that he is like emanating, especially in presence, that makes you and especially me, um, because I can only speak for myself, it made me feel safe immediately. It made me feel being held on a very deep level, understood and seen at a very deep level. And that made me, as a participant in a container, it made me or gave me the ability to go very deep within myself because I knew that he went to all of the places that I will go to myself, that he went there himself already because he's speaking from that deep place, from that experience. And that is, that is so beautiful. That's such a gift. And yeah, everyone who has worked with him, everyone who experienced him, his presence, will probably subscribe to that. It's just so, so beautiful. And the range of, of energies that he is able to tap into, it goes from very subtle, very subtle and very mystic and ethereal into unbelievable unbelievably powerful and strong and and assertive and like oh it's 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 deep you 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 get the energy right when i'm speaking like it's just he he will guide you into these deep places within you and your heart that you need to access to heal and he did that. He did that for me within Convergence and for so many other men. And I'm just honored to have spent time with him on the podcast and to just listen what somebody like that has to say about, about the human experience and about his experience within, you know, this incarnation. And with all that being said, have fun with this episode and take it take it with you let it touch you um yeah this conversation between myself and hunter torren Ah. 
beautiful creation on, on this day, at this time, in this moment. Please facilitate the connection between Maxi and I. May we have clear minds and warm hearts. May we speak of what is needed for the people to hear. Please guide my tongue as we move into this conversation about something that is so much larger than ourselves. May it always be in mind. With praise given to the spirit of this age, with honor, love, and gratitude, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. And with that, I'm in. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you, brother. Setting the stage. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Mm. Um. All right, I'm standing. I'm on a standing desk at a friend's house um, who granted me uh, with, uh, with the opportunity to stay uh, while he is, he is on vacation. And as I'm standing here, I'm feeling, feeling, feeling a lot, a lot that's alive, a lot that's moving. So I couldn't think of many more or any more, more suitable people that I would like to do a check-in with um, uh, other than you. So uh, why don't we just drop in with a quick check-in um, <laughs> to get started and see what's alive with you and me. Yeah, Hunter, uh, checking in, Coastal Salish Territory, home of Chief Seath and all his children, associates, allies, and enemies, uh, Seattle. Checking in, coming in from a survey, like an extended survey of self, uh, an extended period of space, spacious life, you know, after a great intensity season with the sacred suns, um, you know, passing of my father has been recent, moving through um, this great review and placing my attention uh, towards merely watching my own historical record and telling of my own story. Um, so checking in with a, a sense of, of self and a sense of great wonder uh, where all this is going because the times are just mad, my bro, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, and we've, uh, we've asked for responsibility ultimately. Uh, and so that's a big part of what I'm trying to live more deeply in to understanding what the responsibility is for this can of worms that we've <laughs> opened together as brothers. <laughs> you know, with that, uh, you know, um, my eyes are a little puffy, you know, tears have been close. Um, and uh, yeah, it just feels mm. uh, beautiful to feel uh, all the things. So with that, I'm in. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, Maxi checking in from Mannheim in Germany. Mm. Gray, moist day filled with laughter, joy and love. And grief, <laughs> my brother, grief. My hello darkness, my old friend. Here we go again. Um, dancing with, dancing with it, moving through it, day by day, looking at it. Sometimes closer, sometimes a little bit more far away. Um, always with me. Um, since, since parting ways with my beloved in March, grief has entered my realm in a whole different whole different capacity and now it's being introduced in different ways it's it's big goodbyes people moving on uh, from this plane but then it's also smaller goodbyes just as today to someone i 
I deeply care about, but life is, has different plans for us. So saying goodbye there as well, going in that grief. So just feeling this in, these energies um, and going into this conversation with deep gratitude for the awareness of it, for the deep awareness of it, for my capability and capacity to feel that in its entirety, which is such a gift. Um, the melody and the, the scale of life, <laughs> the, ah, it's, it's, it's playing the dark and the, and the very bright tones right now. It's playing both. It's playing the whole symphony. So, um, with that checking in, um, and yeah, just grateful to be, to be here with you. Um, yeah, really do. Thank you. Thank mm. you, brother. Yeah. Now, <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was, I was thinking of of words to say, of 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 things to come up with, with some things that I, that I connect with you coming coming you know going into this conversation into the preparation for it, and it's just. What came up again and again is is a, is is a is a massive <laughs> is a, is such a massive it's a toolbox it's a it's a range of of forces of energies you bring um, to the containers you're facilitating um, to the spaces you hold how matter how small or big they are I've seen you in both I've seen you in one-on-one -on -one. i've seen you in one to many um and you just the 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 well you're like that's like fu filling you that's fueling you that's you're like taking taking from is is so deep it goes so deep it reaches so deep and it goes from very subtle to very powerful so i want to start by just opening up, opening up the space for you to uh, maybe take us, take us a little bit on a, on a journey to, um, to the entry point and to the journey that you took to arrive where you are today, you know, and to the man that we meet when meeting you and when working with you and we're just being with you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> already <laughs> you know the welling the waterfalls um, are coming it's uh, thank you for your witness and uh, see that smile and, and my earbuds pop out these great forces of smiling <laughs> say bluetooth <laughs> away <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm 49 years old. I'll be 50 in April. Um, born in 1974, uh, the conclusion of the Vietnam war, uh, the turning of the counterculture from purpose driven ideologies of revolution to the precursors of a great shadow creeping over pop culture and the reactions to those times become in the 80s you know which when i look back were just such a surreal fucking time like what a weird time and for the western world it was like the height of all insecurity uh amalgamated uh in this pop culture um uh you know witnessing the transition from the analog to the digital age um, seeing being blessed to grow up in with two backgrounds my father always living in the ghetto in washington dc so-called ghetto um, where the afflicted lived and with my mom in upper middle class situations in the white world and just being a watcher, you know, I think that's like the common thread that has made me who I am is uh, seeking to see 
which is my name is Hunter, and and recently, uh, you know, I I was I learned from my Kanaka brother Kale, you know, that a hunter that word is interpreted as he who seeks to seek or he who seeks to see. And mm. you know, I was a very quiet, wide-eyed child. Uh, got to dwell and bask in a type of innocence in the forest and in in faith, uh, the Quaker faith, which imprinted me deeply uh, at the age of eight, uh, noticing what silence is and, and what is present truly in silence and stillness and the broad nature of stillness and how can I bring that no matter how primal we need to go, no matter how much needs the earthquake needs to rumble for some, but if I can continue to remain rooted in the broad still waters of self, then I'm adaptable to all situations within the, the, you know, the range of my toolbox. And it's mm. funny, you know, like, in this broad survey itself, you know, for a long time, I was a stonemason and a landscape designer. And I built pathways and boundaries and uh, walls. Uh, and I call it my graduate course in gravity. Uh, <laughs> but it really is a fundamental aspect of myself because I'm a, um, you know, a long string bean type person, you know, I'm not a big bulky guy and I had to move very heavy things and figure out how to do that. But it gave me a sense of the primal truths of gravity that then rooted me when I took on the study of somatics uh, in, when I was uh, 35, I forget what year it was. So 15 years ago, where I went intensively into the study of a particular discipline that, uh, you know, uh, was really born in Germany by an American uh, brother from Detroit, Jamin McMillan, and the Spatial Dynamics Institute, which is a study of levity as the counter primal force to gravity, and is often thought of in terms of soul forces, a feeling of levity, right? Um, something that brings lightness. And we cultivate through spatial dynamic discipline, an objective sense for the primal uprising, the bubbling or the mana that comes up. And so when I'm able to balance in those tension of forces, I can free myself and ask only one question as a prayer, which is what is needed today for those I will gather with as an amalgamation of what I have to offer. And maybe it's just a song today. Maybe it is that rumble of addressing the father wound, addressing it all, coming straight to the shame and purging it before creation and allowing them to collapse into the earth and let her absorb them as she wishes to, as, as men have kept themselves from doing. So faith, movement, observation, presence, mm. music, joy, grief, brushes with insanity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. All of it. It'll be a dull experience without it. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for taking, for taking us on that journey. Um, what kind of, there's some, there's like chapters coming, coming to me when listening to you. Um, could you, could you give, could you give names to those chapters in your life? Yeah. Yeah. And I also have to uh, begin with another chapter, which is, you know, uh, 23 years of being a father. 
um, uh, two wonderful yes. sons and an amazing daughter, um, yes. which has been this, this common thread. And it's interesting, you know, because I have to serve myself how that wasn't in my initial tale. And I think a lot of it's because there's this very large unknown in front of me, you know, this, this so-called empty nest that America provides for um, uh, as a necessity. And um, so I just wanted to honor and my wife, Megan, um, mm. in all of, in all of this, in the past uh, quarter century, <laughs> so wow. to speak. Uh, so yeah, the chapters, uh, you know, last night I held a local council and we were talking about preparation for the long nights that are, are coming and how the rebel has always, you know, this is another thing. Like we talk about these noble archetypes a lot in men's work and the rebel really needs to be honored more, I believe, because it's really what binds us in a, in a large way, us wild men is that we are resisting something and oftentimes the angst and the anger is in reaction to what we're saying no to if that makes sense and so uh you know my with my father just passing to and honoring him uh david uh torin aka deluxe Turan. Uh, mm. you know he there was a rebel streak that came down the line uh, that met the anger when my, and the, the dissolution of my parents' marriage, uh, coming into my middle years, the rage and the emptiness, uh, where so much of this perpetually broken heart that we see in men is founded in these years, like a, you know, a large percentage, that doorway into adolescence. Right. Um, and, and for me, <laughs> You know, I, I did, you know, the classic things, had a band, you know, uh, experimented with drugs. Um, mm. I did pretty well in high school once my, my mom guaranteed my freedom from curfew if I made, uh, you know, uh, made the grades. But this rebel streak, uh, particularly at the dawn of technology, and I, I spoke about this last night, <clears throat> propelled me into the wilderness and to seek out large, quiet places in the wilds. You know, my, that's what my heroes did. George Fox, the founder of Quakerism. And I really uh, took that to heart. I was blessed enough to be given a wilderness trip right after, out of high school. And so I, you know, had the freedom to become a wild thing. And I, I used mm -hmm. that time well uh, to, to, you know, go to the high, quiet places. Uh, particularly in the United States. Um, I studied agriculture, um, studied Qigong, yoga, you know, through my 20s, kind of got this glimpse. And also uh, another thing for me is that um, chronic pain has been a theme in my life. Um, uh, I was born with a disformity in my foot that was corrected, corrected uh, through surgery when I was 21. And so I, you know, I, all these connections are being made, like I want to feel as able as my imagination. And so I began to strive into the physical habitation of self and the arts, you know, the Eastern arts, <clears throat> which are often a doorway, but always kept rooted uh, with the Quaker community in California as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and pursuit of the mystic West, which is often overlooked, bypassed, and villainized. Um, you know, you being in Germany, uh, which where so much of the work of Rudolf Steiner yeah. was done. Uh, and so that was another steady stream for me, is that his lecture spoke to something that I inherently understood, although being incredibly confusing to my 20 year old mind, you know, um, another big foundational piece for me was definitely the prominence of Rastafari culture in the nineties, uh, you know, coming 
off the death of Bob Marley and the rise of his children. There was this huge insurgence of positivity in the mid 90s. Hip hop, conscious hip hop was shaping the rebel culture. I mean, the underground scene was incredible. Um, you know, New York, London, Miami, these places were boiling over with creative energy and a desire to search out something new. And, um, you know, the deceivers were there as well and things played out and there was a shift in culture again, but that foundation of a Solomonic world culture was interesting to me and you know I love you know to me the music <laughs> still irresistible and presents truths in a way that's palatable from a baby to the greatest mind if you if you delve into it and so I was also very orthodox in my thinking for a long time <clears throat> which was you know discipline is so needed for men and I didn't see what I needed around me to a large degree in my family and so in looking outside i the ethiopian orthodox was very attractive to me in a lot in a in a big way um and was very helpful and continues to mm. be and, uh, <laughs> and that's until you know uh, maui came in and uh sent a river through the boxes of orthodoxy uh, so that I could be reborn yet again <laughs> yeah. yes, into sir. this re-indigenization yeah. process, <laughs> which yeah. is, uh, you know, a multi-chaptered layer in and of itself. And then, you know, finally, um, you know, I was with the Spatial Dynamics Institute for eight years. I, I chose at that time to do something I never done, which is fully commit to one discipline for an ex a seven year cycle of self. Uh, and I did that, you know, um, you know, I don't even know, probably over 20, 25,000 hours of um, education, teaching, clinical hours uh, over the past seven years, eight years now. Incredible. So uh, honor to my teacher, Jamie McMillan, the Spatial Dynamics Institute. Germans, check it out. Uh, he's, <laughs> people are still active there. <laughs> um, so yeah, man, that, there's, yeah, there's I that. <laughs> Alive, well lived. Wow. Um, yeah, it's just, mm, just good to hear that. It's just good to hear someone and yourself just being fueled by let's find that out like i'm gonna let's 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 go there what what has actually fu fueled you and what has kept you kept you going and kept you kept you curious and kept you hungry for life in that way but um it's it's obvious that something did and uh it's beautiful to witness as someone who is on the brink of of doing of closing a chapter opening up a new one and i feel like this death and rebirth right it come ex expansion contraction as you so beautifully <laughs> introduced uh it's 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 happening it's happening bro right now as we speak and so uh yeah it's 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 inspiring to see what you can fit in a lifetime and not even in half a lifetime in your case uh hopefully 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 even more so uh, it's 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 good it's it feels really good and it's inspiring and so yeah and so now the question what what kept you going what kept you curious what kept you on your feet what kept you doing doing this work on yourselves with yeah, others you know yeah yeah it's interesting with the rebel too like the shadow aspects um uh, as part of the survey is like <laughs> well i couldn't keep a job so i had to work for myself <laughs> um, <laughs> you know <laughs> so i never had anyone else to blame but myself um although i would try at times you know in shadow talking responsibility um, man 
Yeah. Yeah. And responsibility, um, realizing that my own personal growth and satisfaction was key to parenting well, mm. not being miserable. You know, um, mm. and, you know, trying to remedy misery. <laughs> From the shadow side to speak of it you know before before we get into the woo so-called um not liking discomfort was part of it like chronic pain is like a real thing you know and it, until people experience it they won't understand it right right it's one of those realms of context and oftentimes people in chronic pain really feel isolated in that, you know? Um, and so that was, that was that part of self that was for me, you know? Um, so that I could do what I needed to do. Um, and you know, it, I've been having some ongoing conversations, uh, with a dear brother of mine about naivety and its role in human development, right? And we, we like to say there's naivety and nativity. Mm. In, nativ in nativity, there's naivety, right? We look at the words for the sound. And so in choosing sides, so-called, and having faith, there's like a naivety that was precious in a way to keep me always coming to hope. Mm -hmm. And realizing that hope was actually contagious when it was put into action. And that something was created through the spirit. And I, you know, at first I tried to work so, so subtly, it's like, if I make a landscape beautiful enough, it'll cause someone to pause, to, to second glance, to m take a, a pause in life, you know? And I'm like, ah, gonna have to work <laughs> a little bit more obviously than that uh, to get the people's attention um, for the awareness <laughs> that they seek unknowingly. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so keeping me going within Naivety is also, you know, speaking from a visionary standpoint and staying with that which shook me to my core in the deep solitude of, of self. Things that are, you know, should not be spoken in public places, but the thread that faith brings when one is open to the earth and the cosmos and the realms themselves and how they speak and continue to speak to ears that listen mm. and to understand what's at stake in the listening. So that keeps me going and, uh, mm. <laughs> and it's today keeps me going, you know, it's brothers. Yeah. Like Maxi, you know, and even now I'm seeing something <clears throat> my own, in my own trajectory that you've helped illuminate is going from ultra subtle to the primal, which is really what the sacred sons gave me again, because I was at a time where the pain and I was just broken. Right. And it was, I still moved well in the subtle realms quite well. Hmm but I was beginning to lose my grip on earthliness and, you know, they gave me that, they, you know, brought me back to, you know, what was needed. <laughs> and so yes, that yeah. was the trajectory of, of the range, I guess, so to speak. <laughs> oh, brother, I feel that so much. It's, ah, oh, dude. We, I'm moving in the subtle as well, man. I'm moving there. I'm feeling comfortable in it. I'm feeling comfortable in the feminine as well. Um, 
and then the receiving you know and receiving um and the naivete as well oh all of those things i feel that deeply and and then it's the need for for action in those times that we that we that we live in and something again i i you offer just so such beautiful avenues of 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 thinking of feeling of being of of working as well you know like you you don't retrace like you participating you're in it you know you you you're creating you're a father you're you're a brother you're a you're a son and so you you're in the world right and then not of it right you really the in the way in which you know you you talk about landscaping the way that you connect to the elements and you weave the, the global understanding into teachings that you share with us as brothers at sacred sons and that i got to receive is so rich and it's so uh it's like um mm, it's just it may it, it, it may you know to to the ordinary mind and to the ordinary observer it may just seem trivial it may just seem plain and, and simple but there is so much to be found and you're just someone who can illuminate that wonder of simplicity in a new way and sh sh like shine a new light on it and that's something that just came through so much in your story is like how can we find those moments in life just again and again and again no matter where we are with whom we are what are we doing you know we can there is something to be learned to return to to remember and then to share and pass on um that's beautiful that's so beautiful um your life offers so many avenues i, I <laughs> we won't we won't we won't have the capacity in, in one conversation to tackle them all but i out of just pure selfish curiosity i would I would love to explore the maybe you know not go chrono chronologically but like start where you're at now and 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 go go with the somatics go with the sp with the spatial dynamic go with go with the body um I feel I receive there is there is an there's an urge to transcend there's an urge to get away from here it's transcending into higher conscious levels of consciousness and through those conversations here on the podcast, a big takeaway for me, what brought me into some conversations I had with you on where I want to be going with my path is, okay, we've got to return to the body. We've got to return to this vessel um, and, to, and to the ground we're standing on. And so I would just be, I would, I, I'm so curious just to, to have you share whatever you feel like sharing about the somatics about why why you got into somatics why is this important work and how can it really how can it help us to address issues of of mankind as it is today because we all feel it we all witness it um and and you offer something so what what are you offering with somatics yeah, yeah. you know it's such a broad term these days, uh, you know, it's a, it's a big old hashtag if those are still a thing. Um, and really what I believe is everyone is, is issuing a somatic prayer subconsciously. There's this desire for wholeness, you know, to look at the word, a somatic body is, is, is a wholeness, a completion, a unified sovereign aspect of creation right mm -hmm. so a planet is a somatic entity right it is in movement it is a whole it is representative of a whole and and a, a manifestation of a completion that is set mm -hmm. on the time scale the dent of time scale all right slow it down to we uh <laughs> and we we have this <laughs> So there, we instantly went to the outer realms there. Um, man, where are you? <laughs> but, you know, like to put it in plain, practical 
examinations uh, through a critique of society. Where are we at, people? Right? What is this expression of this miracle of forces, of element, a house for a soul? that miracles are brought to life through in the physical realm alone. I still marvel at cities in awe. It's like, wow, man, people do this. They figured it out. They use their bodies, right? And it's the commons, right? Like, as a, uh, it's, it's what we all have in common is a body. No matter what the context of where that body is, it starts there. It is the unifier, a body on a body. And how those bodies are treated and how those bodies perceive themselves and others has a broad repercussion on a planetary scale. And there's an aspect of the body that's out of control for people. They're in a subconscious Contraction, retraction, they forget to be a body. And they're following the trajectory of the broken generational gestural patterns that come with a consciousness. Just like a planet has a consciousness, there's a consciousness that comes with a form. Because it has a function. And as that form distorts, how many generations of men led from their groin, literally, in front of their hearts? There's this story of soul being told over and over and over again on a subconscious reflexive plane. Right? And so as part of the balancing of tensions for me as a therapist and a counselor is to come into awareness come into recognition that stillness is not uh, accessible because the body's twitching and not in a constructive mm -hmm. way. Right? Mm. So that's the story of the skull, stillness, stillness. And then rhythm, how does rhythm apply to life? You know? The indigenous elders tell us, you know, we're not so much out of balance, we're out of rhythm, which causes mm. imbalance. And that's expressed through the ribs, rhythmic form. And then we're here to be free, which is just crazy. Creator, please, free, it's so hard. But <laughs> that is our limbs, our will forces as they express themselves which is a picture of creation itself. That's what the body is. Out of stillness descended a thought which created rhythm. Through freedom creation is made. Through choice. What's informing the choices? What's keeping you from the genius? And the body is the battlegrounds. As Tanayashi yes, Code says, yeah. right? It is the battleground. So it's where I feel like I can show up with that Mars spirit, with that warrior, that golden warrior spirit as a wound mender, but with a ferocity too, a sternness that asks people to move beyond their subjective reasoning around what's cool and relevant. And to find stillness, rhythm, and freedom. Freedom with responsibility. Through the body. Through the battleground. I mean, we are attacked. Day in, day out. Through the consumption. <clears throat> through this false Kaaba stone. Flat world. Mm. Which we give thanks for, too, because we are utilizing it in this way. It's a neutral magic, right? Like humans have neutral magic through a body. It can do 
can do well for others and can take it the other way. So the body is a battleground and it's so beautiful. And it is a miracle. And it is the valley of decision, so-called. Mm. How many light years did it take for the form to come up within the physical universe? How old is the inception of the thought of the human being? Mm -hmm. And so for me, I got to bring it to, I'm going to bring it back. That's the expansion <laughs> in the contraction <laughs> biomechanics. Flow becomes form becomes function. This, this is a form. It has a function. What that is, only you know in your heart of hearts. Right? What is the flow that's introduced? And is there a form that's ideal for certain aspects of consciousness? Of course, this is what the mystery schools knew and continue to unfold in pop culture in some ways and, and in movements in other ways. My apologies for my uh, technical problems here. So we need to find practices that are incredibly intense, physical, in states of informed sequence that is based on an archetypal gate or a walking song. And we need to pursue a objective mystical art or so-called soft art, but they're really not soft arts, um, to create the same dynamic tension when we move towards uh, understanding what somatics is. I mean, this is the cutting ground. It's like, yeah, get people in their body, but there's people that are too much in their bodies. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I like. I, so how, how do I we can create only... that expansion contraction? What, right. What's the name of your program here? Going out, looking in. <laughs> exactly. Going out, looking in. So, thank you. That's there's it. a there's mm. a mouthful. Oh yeah. Well, I can only I can only recommend um, to, and I did in the in the in the preparation for this to listen to what you are offering on your website and the resources you have there and the videos that you have there in which you explain um, the holistic concept of what what this is, you know, what, what somatics is. And that being said, um, a sentence, two sentences have been spoken there that I, that's stuck out and that is, I believe everyone is seeking this ability to express love. And that is really the core of what somatic counseling is all about. Um, it might, it surprised me. It surprised me positively. But I would just, I'd love to have you maybe, maybe share what, what, and elaborate a little bit where that came from. Yeah. Well, it's actually, uh, it's coming from you uh, because I had said that uh, it's everyone is looking to express this wholeness, but really when that wholeness is there, love is what's present. Yes. Mm. So thank you. Um, you know, <laughs> there's this seeking of wholeness of integrating the parts, right? So much of our psychology and, you know, for me and my shadow too, is always like compartmentalizing aspects of life like keeping them in organized form uh you know and so there's this integration that can be sought through somatics through the somatic arts of the body and it can be something as practical you know people say a lot and yeah i just need to get out of my head and i'm like you don't you need to meet yourself in your head or let me invite you to meet yourself in your head and integrate it with the rest Right. Can mm. we meet ourselves where we're at rather than going into the shame spiral of ah, I'm in my head again and I'm on the treadmill and it's like, yeah, you are. What are the tools that bring you out of that state of awareness? What are the things that exacerbate those things? What can we reflect? What brought us there? How did we respond? What were the results? You know, so to be everyone is becomes a scientist in a way, you know, uh, and we have this empirical relationship with self and a chance to be extremely honest with ourselves. 
Did it increase awareness? Did it increase my ability to give and receive love? Did it give and, you know, did it increase my ability to recognize beauty and reflect it in the world? Right? Mm. These are the markers that we can begin to look for. And for some people, it's as simple as going to a yoga class, you know, doing things for the first time in the body. Because to be truly in pursuit of somatics is a playful spirit. Right. And even the way like I could have been like, I didn't say love. It's like I actually did say love. I just used the word wholeness and we could play in that space to create something new together. Right. Um, so in seeking out, um, you know, stuff, I always encourage people like jump on a on a consultation call with me. Um, I really try and shape things to people to the needs of a person uh, and, and give them a clear reflection of that. Um, and, uh, you know, it is, it, you're already on a somatic journey. That's what your life is. That was you, the promise you gave when you took flesh. <laughs> <laughs> it is the starting point. Use it, have fun with it, you know, be responsible yeah. with it. Mm. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, sh you shared in, in another one of your videos, you shared that many say, you know, it's a long, it's the longest, the longest road, the longest journey you'll ever take is from here to here. Um, and yet, like, like you say, it's instantaneous from the moment we are born, we are, it's happening, it, we're here. <laughs> and so we are, we are in, in, like it's, it is happening. It is, it's, it's functioning, but I have the feeling that the pendulum uh, and whatever forces cause it to be that way, we can, we can, we could probably discuss, but um, the pendulum is moving, is moving between the two. And I just certainly, when I'm looking at my trajectory, I can just say that like, I tried, I try to, to, to somewhat establish a connection to the, or like a relationship, I would say, a loving relationship to, to, the, to the mind um, through intense meditation, living in monasteries. And now I'm, I'm like, okay, well, there is, well, there is a body. <laughs> there is this, like it's, it's storing things. And that is actually where I would love. And it, actually, uh, I, I was... That I was like in wonder that this was just published a couple of days ago on your site, the case that you published uh, on your blog of your um, of your patient and how some of the trauma from an accident that she that she experienced was stored in the system. So I was just I I, I I've written it down <laughs> like. <laughs> In big letters over here like I, I i was like wow this is amazing we we needed you need to elaborate on this yet we need to get this out like why because the, the connection is not obvious is it it's not obvious that you can you can you use your hands you use you use you use the body to release those imprinted memories of traumatic events and so i would just give you I don't know, open up the space here for that and have you a little bit share, sh share when, if you feel like it about what happened there. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we'll start with the case. Um, she's a avid mountaineer, very strong woman, um, right in her comfort zone. She took a bad tumble head over from, you know, like while uh, close to a peak. Uh, and came very close, you know, to losing her life. Um, if she had slid much further, she was, she was, it was over. And, um, you know, she came to me with the injuries, with the bumps, the bruises, you know, some spinal alignment stuff. And we got that straightened out. However, on the, the way that I work, so I talk a lot about this principle of expansion and contraction, right? We see it in nature, we see the seed, which then expands and contracts to the stem. And so what is the expansive aspect of the subtle bodies 
uh, which throughout the ages have been referred to as different forces, uh, astral and etheric forces. And in particular, the astral forces are what go out in front of us and lead the body through. And it's also the dream realm. The etheric is streaming in and informing. And so when there's injury that is intense like that, um, the body will continue to retract the subtle bodies first and they compound into the self. So the mere fact that she was continuing to brace from the fall, so that was the physical manifestation, was the bracing. There was an aspect of herself so that she was falling in her dreams every night, right? Or many nights, mm -hmm. she was waking, still in the fall. So she was already working, or she was already um, in a state of free fall, although she's walking around doing her, her life. There's an aspect of her that is falling. Um, and so when we bring, so I talked about stillness and rhythm. So my job is to be still and listening when working with her with hands on. Um, uh, and to retune those rhythms, which are perceptible. Uh, it's very similar to the subtle spinal fluids that craniosacral um, workers you know are able to perceive the subtle forces and so when those came back into rhythm into a dynamic contraction and expansion rather than a uh, what would look like this constant slamming back rather than this breath then the dreams stopped because she was finally, mm. after several weeks, no longer falling. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> it does. I mean, it's... Mm. I'll give you another example. Yeah. So I myself had a bad fall. And I, I, I broke a bunch of tissues around my, my sacrum and I, my, I started to have a reflex where I was pulling away from that site. And even still, if I'm having a hard day, I have to consciously find symmetry. I would just want to balance my life out. Well, let's start with some symmetry, equal distribution along the planes, right? There's something there for me in this form that I seek. So I regain the ground in the war uh, of, with body and the injury and the pain and the suffering. In the wholeness, where can I begin? I can begin here. Hmm. It's everywhere. It's literally everywhere. Like this, this holistic understanding of the body as the system as as the carrier as the carriage as the yeah as the vessel of yeah it's it's where the soul resides and so why did the the modalities you're describing just then this is it's dawning on on more and more people i feel like is this interconnectedness of yeah, the inside out and the outside in. It's the dance between the two and the origin and the deep, the, the, the deep memory of, in that case, tissue um, of those experiences um, and where they can actually be released. But it, it just, like the understanding that it takes to work on that level and the sensitivity, um, and uh, and just the yeah the outlook on on the patients as this holistic holistic being is still rare to be found, and so I I resonated with that a lot, and I <laughs> actually makes me yeah makes me really regret not to not to have come up to Seattle, but like. 
the US is just so big. <laughs> I was just all yeah. over the place. But like I would I would <laughs> I would like I can like this is also stuff to be to be really experienced. And when I'm li listening to the people that you've worked with, um, that's what they keep saying, right? Like it's just like this is really, you know, it's it's something to be to be experienced. And I know also that you're working with people like over distance, such as we do for example, and talk right now. Um, and that that is that that is just an opportunity um, or an invitation again from me to for people to to take that to take that step into into the world of what is not immediately sort of accessible by your local physiotherapist. Okay, like this is just i don't know more and more what's what's dawning on me through those conversations it's just like um it's way deeper than that and it's way w richer than that um and yeah so i just i just wanted to um really emphasize that once again um and with that being said um i I would be. I have to. F I have. To, I want to find a a way to to connect the. To con to to build bridges here, um, but I wanted to talk about the Hawthorne. <laughs> we have to talk about the Hawthorne. We have to talk about uh, this part of of your journey and 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 how this influences, I guess, also your work. I'm sure it does, but also like, you know, I guess also the subtle realms of of what it is you're doing, but also how it informs maybe the grief you're feeling right now with your dad moving on, whatever it, it, it is, it seems to be a constant for you. It seems to be a, something that, that, ah, oh yeah, just like, you know, uh, survives space and time. It's just like something you keep coming back to something you utilize, something you build a long lasting relationship with. And so I'm just in, just, just also curious to, what that relationship looks like and how you built it and what it is now. Mm. Yeah. You know, it, it began with being hosted by the Sacred Sons in Maui and with Kale, so much of his teaching at that time and remains was around, uh, the ideas of radical hospitality, radical indigenous hospitality. And within that, there was also presented the Hawaiian Trinity, which is spirit, land, and the human being, as far as I understand. So it gave me a new trinity to contemplate, to interact with. And, you know, my own expression as a magician, as an alchemist, has always been very uh, solitary. And I saw spaces yeah. that I recognized that were in a social place of relationship and connection in circle that were informed by the ancient sea. A table set from the ancient sea impressed me greatly. And coupled with that idea was the idea of orphan wisdom, which was an archetype I had not contemplated as a guide before that time. And so, you know, I have parents like, what do you mean you're an orphan? Well, I, I'm an orphan in the sense that I was not born to an earth wisdom tradition that aligns me with the rhythms of the cosmos. And so to me, everyone who is afflicted by the edicts of modern Western society are orphans. In that they have no mystery tradition of earth wisdom as a as a cultural root and there's also a sensitivity 
you know, in the giving and the setting of the indigenous table, the radical hospitality and in, in the behavior of the guest. What are manners? What are the courtesies needed that are, that are not present? And, you know, I've seen my brother get quite hurt and upset by how people behave at the table set. And there's this, this question of taking, right? of appropriation it's like all this all these sacred things being expressed quote unquote sacred you know in the pop culture in uh in the you know the the birth of the what i call the new new age uh which we're currently in during uh the war of all against all um, there is a great impulse to express what everyone knows that God is great and that the earth is beloved and be it loves us more than we can even possibly imagine. And there needs to be a cultural expression of that that is true and does not lead to cultish behavior. Mm. So, you know, to remind the people, he asked me, what is my connection to the Hawthorne tree? And of course, I have to take the long route. <clears throat> and so... <clears throat> I began to connect through this, this new idea of Trinity um, for me to think of it as a Trinity, spirit, land, and human being, and to go to the earth first, because I was always also very rooted in a cosmic philosophy, you know? Yeah. Um, and so that's, you know, the piece that's kind of missing as an embodiment expression in the Western mystic traditions, particularly anthroposophy or the, the teachings of Rudolf Steiner is there's a almost rejection of the body in to a certain degree or a, 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 a fearful approach to the body oftentimes. Um, so I went to the land here I was an orphan too. I had just moved here. It was 2020, beginning of the pandemic. No friends, you know, didn't really have, I didn't have a practice established in the city. And all of a sudden, nobody wanted to be touched. And so I had a lot of time on my hands. <coughs> Excuse me. And so uh, I started to, you know, begin to apply this new knowledge to pursue uh, what's referred to as re-indigenization, re which is to develop a long, reliable, disciplined, courteous relationship with the earth, with the place that I found myself as a settler. And so this is this other idea, the orphan wisdom and, then the, and the settler's heart, which as Americans, we need to examine you not so much because you're mm. in the place of your birth. But we have been part of a diaspora that is, you know, trillions of stories within the diaspora of white, black, and brown as they move across. And so we find ourselves. And so what is the identity that I can be most honest in when I move to a new place and I feel homes, uh, you know, brokenhearted and, and unconnected? And this place is so beautiful. Anyone who's never been to Washington State is one of the most beautiful places on earth. Lushness and mist and waters mm. of all kinds, uh, high places and low. So, you know, I sought out, but it was really, again, a simple prayer. Teach me, I asked the land to teach me to set a table that is representative of her love of humankind. And she did. Right. And I asked for songs to sing. And she gave them to me. And it required me spending a lot of time getting up very early. And I was telling the men last night, greet as many dawns as you can, people. This is the, one of the deepest medicines that our indigenous brothers and sisters are passing to us. One of the remnants that is such a foundation of life. And I committed to the conversation. Uh, I, you know, I'm also very informed by phenomenological science. Uh, I believe, 
uh, I believe he is German, uh, um, Wolfgang von uh, Goethe, you know? Yes. Uh, Goethe. Yeah, Goethe. Yeah. yeah. So Goethe, who's best known for have written writing the Faust, which I believe he did at 17 years old. Um, some, some, somewhere around there, yes. Yeah. Every, Germ uh, every we'll, German we'll has read it. Every German, every, every, every German student. <laughs> yeah, well, I wish every American would. Um, it's a magnificent masterpiece. But he wrote at 17. What most people don't know is that he spent the rest of his life in the pursuit of natural sciences and developing what is now known as Gertian observation, which is a relational, devotional way to be in the world in observation. I am here, I am observing that there's an aspect of me, like Plato said, that reaches out and touches that thing. And can I empty myself out and be informed by the very being that is unseen behind the physical manifestation? And he was a master of it. And spatial dynamics is really a continuation of that philosophy of, into a very practical sequencing of how to get there. And so that is the knowledge I was able to bring into this prayer of teach me to set a table, teach me to sing with my brothers, teach us, teach me the songs that are needed for the land and the hearts of mankind. Give me culture, please. I'll express it. And so it's built, you know, uh, last or two Saturdays ago, we gathered on Hunt the Hunter's Moon on Whidbey Island, which is just north of here. And we sang for two hours, you know, and it all started with, with, with one song, uh, the lyrics of which were, you know, cry, cry for the wounds of the world we cry, rise, rise from the wounds of the world we rise. And those that were present for that first uh, grinding, that first gathering, uh, are aware of the happenings afterwards, is that the rains came after nine months of drought in this particular region because our tears shed. So for me, what I've realized, and I'll conclude here, is that in my relationship to, you know, uh, a, a tree, which has the Hawthorne tree as long mystical tradition and lore, uh, though I didn't come to it from an intellectual place, but was led to her. Um, I'm a, what I'm seeing is that I'm attempting to weave or some aspect is trying to weave through me the Christ mysteries in the indigenous hospitality ways of animism and how is what is the awareness needed for a true animism to be reborn within mm. the recognition of the heights and the hierarchies and to ask to be a meeting place a crossroads you know we often say you know these are the crossroads encircled. When a man comes into a circle, he, we're, we're meeting him at his crossroads a lot of time. He has choices to make, decisions to make. Right? So what is the human being as a crossroad, as a bridge between worlds, the only upright being, fully autonomous, limb and head, between the heaven and the earth, with a sun, sun middle, a solar plexus? What is the role? What is the culture that wants to be seen? You know, and we say, we don't need to seek what was found. We seek what the ancestors looked for. You know, that's something, that, you know, has really guided me. You know, you know, mm -hmm. they seek in the way they saw so that they would have the songs to sing. Seek in the way that they saw so that they would feel a sense of place and understand where they were. To have conversations with the birds and have eagle help with decisions. Mm. <laughs> much to be found much to be found <laughs> much to be found when you listen and look yes so beautiful it's all right uh, here around us it's all, all right here <laughs> it's all right here it's all right here
Everybody wants to save the world and nobody wants to do the dishes, right? Yeah, That's <laughs> right here, just right in front of us. Um, Hunter, why is this, why is this work? Um, I've met you at Sacred Sons. You've been facilitating with them. You've been working with them. Um, but that's just like one, one representation of, of, of a movement, like of a, of, of work with, with, with in that case, it's men and you're heavily involved with it and you're part of the movement, you're a voice in it. Um, you're a respected individual within these communities. Um, and I've experienced the magic that you bring to this container. So, um, I wanted to, I, I wanted to ask you why, why is this work important to you? Yeah, you know, uh, it really is again, the place I was at in my life, you know, I, I never really contemplated too much. I was interested in the human experience, man and woman. And then the cultural wars began and, and, and the wounds came boiling to the surface on a large scale. And I myself, again, chronic pain and just, I, I'd kind of come to a door, even though I was highly skilled, I couldn't go any further. And it was almost like in front of this door was a sign that said, you cannot go alone. You may not enter alone <laughs> is what the feeling was, you know? And, uh, you know, I saw these youth calling out, um, these, you know, this trumpet in the wilderness, so to speak. I like to tell Adam Jackson, the trumpet in the wilderness, <laughs> uh, the, 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 lion, the lion's roar. Um, oh, yeah. You know, these Hell young yeah, guys coming lion. forward and being like, you know, you know, hey, there's a problem. And I'm like, yeah, man, there's a problem. We're calling all lone wolves. Oh, shit, that's me. Um, you know addressing we saw the me too movement the cultural wars and here were guys that were like we got to come together like men are not garbage men are not the the problem they've caused many of the problems but that you know it's like what are we gonna do we can't just get rid of them all you know like what what's the solution <laughs> so they were taking action which i re respected a lot and um you know being older I thought it was important for me to listen to the youth, you know, um, you know, wisdom will come out of the mouths of babes and sucklings. So I, I take these things to heart, you know, and I say, Hey, here's some young guys and they're doing it. And I'm not comfortable with pop culture, but I'm going to do it anyway. And it's so primal. Why are they hitting each other and yelling so much? Um, <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's just, I'm like, Oh, actually I need a little bit of that. And, oh, okay. Actually, like, I don't, I don't want to get punched in the face ever again, but I see the deep medicine in it and I feel comfortable facilitating it. And I love the movement and I love to stay strong and physical and prepared. Um, so first and foremost, I mean, they help me enormously in these relationships and like also like navigating confrontation in a way that was pretty new to me having like, I had been in bands, you know, I played in bands and it's like, What, bro what broke up how many bands that could have been just amazing, you know, because of these, these primal wounds being played out and conflict and, <coughs> excuse me, that's one of the things I see is like, for me, it's like, oh, healthy conflict. How mm. has that been missing? Where you hold on to it so long until it becomes a war. Right. Let's address yeah. that. Um, and you know, I found the tools that I already had very applicable to the culture to a large degree. Um, also just like finding that unique space where ceremony can be coupled with discipline and sobriety, which, uh, I think is super important. It's like, push yourself to, you know, like to open yourself. Right. And it's not that I'm like, you know, against, uh, using, substances at times but you know it's become such a crutch and such like a shame burden for men it's like we come together but we still feel the spiritual heights in sobriety because we're being so real mm. and because we have the beauty and the grace of this indigenous hospitality at the core as the tip of the spear you know and we're willing to be real 
And when we're real, spirits like, oh, finally, they're being real. Let's show up. Let's go see what they're up to. Oh, yeah, let's give them some mana, right? Let's give them some good energy. Let's listen to their prayers. The earth, too, is like it's soothing to her, you know, to, to hear men, you know, like after the big, you know, the big process that we went through around the wounds of the father uh, stemming from our polarity brothers there, right? It's like, fall to the earth. It's a joy. She's watered by your tears. She's like, oh, they care. That mends mm -hmm. her heart too, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and it's, it's, I crave intensity, you know, that's part of why, you know, like on a, to a certain degree. Um, and I think that men need that satiated and, and, and sacred sons are good at bringing that forward. And, you know, especially with like the nines, the movement stuff's getting more and more refined because ultimately, <clears throat> you know, I want to see somatic seen as igniting the mind body. And we have a right. beginning of that. How do you ignite these subtle, these subtle bodies that have withered over, over time? Um, how do you ignite the physicality so that that confidence, the same, you know, the affirmation spoken is coupled by an upright, graceful stance? You know? Yeah. So... Overall, what I see uh, as what's, what's so important is, the, is that there's an opportunity to amalgamize self, to create a whole of self, to come out of the fragmentation, to come out of the isolation, to come out of the hyper-individuality and come together with men to be raw and real and welcome. All of you is welcome. All of you is welcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first time I heard that, I was like, what? <laughs> like, I, you know, <laughs> just in that no one ever had said that to me before, you know? <laughs> I'm like, okay. Uh, yeah, bring all of you. Bring all of you. Oh, yeah. And it's true. I've seen it play out. You've seen it play out many times. Um, it's exactly what's happening. Um, and it's a beautiful process to witness once, once, it, once it actually does happen, once, once we bring it all and teaches us so much about, as Uncle always says, we all can be the Auschwitz God, you know, and everyone believes uh, that they, they're not capable of doing that. They just don't know themselves very well. It's all, we're just multifaceted beings and it's, bring it bring it all especially with the men um wow and you know if you the moment you just bring that up with the with with what yeah how we work with the father that that yeah it's medicine we need that <laughs> mm. yeah. yeah um it's a big deal you know the way we come together you know And there's the pop culture element, which, you know, I'm still like, I'm a, a private person, like the whole relationship to privacy coming, you know, growing up when I did is I'm still like, oh, this is, this is interesting to me. You know, I, I notice in myself, it's an edge <laughs> and, it, and I also now recognize the importance of it, normalizing the conversation, being visible in what we do. And people don't understand until they come just how, yeah. you know, They get this taste and I'm like, you know, there's this essence, this depth that's reached that can't be expressed that way. But let's continue to invite in this way by normalizing this in the culture and say, you know, there's like an audacity to it, which I love with about the sacred sons, you know, right? Sacred sons, how dare you say, you know, it's like, how are you going to claim that? It's like, yo, we're here. Like, what are you going to do? Um, <laughs> and, 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 and that's like, you know, having an open invitation as we do disarms those attacks immediately because it's like, Hey, come on. Exactly. Tell us all about it. Tell us all about it. If you dare, you're most welcome. 
right? Because it's a, mm. uh, it's a cauldron, or it's really a crucible of brotherhood, right? There's this this white hot heat, this intensity. I don't know if you know how a crucible works with this cup that in uh, you know when you're melting bronze or something mm -hmm. that draws the gases and solidifies them into into ultra heat, you know. And, you know, some guys, you know, you see them, there's guys that are able to stay peripheral and detached through a whole event. Um, but I, soul markers are being left that they won't be able to run from. Yeah. Just a wit, like, it's, it's not, it's not even the own processes, is it? Like, it's, it's, it's the witnessing. Ah, it's the witnessing of, of of what connects us all, what is within another brother, what is then coming up for me, um, introducing me to a pain that I have not felt, um, maybe something that's coming because they are parents and I am not yet, but I, I, I see it and I, I feel the way that I feel the responsibility those, those men are carrying from different, and that's also something sacred, from the different planes, from the different it's different walks of life, uh, age, uh, cultures, backgrounds, whatever it is. Uh, but we come together in a form, and this is for me as one of the few Europeans, right? I didn't, I didn't need no introduction. I didn't need no, no big. This is how this works. Like I felt, I felt because we remember. This is what we're doing, isn't it? Like I felt like. I, I've just, I've just, I've just lost my way and I just, they just helped me find it again for something that has been within me all this time. And, you know, looking at German history, we don't have to talk about it. There's, the wounds are open, they're raw, they're bleeding. Um, and, and looking at my ancestry, it's, it's right there. And so can, can I remember that through this work and within the first within the first set of eyes, no matter where the brother is from, I can see it. I can see myself, I can see my father, I can see my great grandfather, I can see I can see them all. And um uh, so <laughs> oh it's oh yeah, it's just it has brought I'm in there for a couple of weeks or months. You you're in there for, for years. Like this is yeah it's a gift that keeps on giving um and let's see what we can do over here in europe and in germany specifically um yeah yeah, yeah i'd be I, i would really like to get over there um mm. yes for sure please we need that well, we, we need that here that especially that on that land be. we talk about we, we talk about it with uncle many times uh he's been over here with mankind project many times um there's a lot to be healed here so yeah um that being Some said um the trees. Oh, yes um yeah you, you said something important too which i think the people need to understand is you use the word witness right you know what do you do at sacred sons we witness each other and that can seem like oh okay <laughs> And for me, I'm, I'm actually getting away, trying to get away from the word process. Because it is a witnessing. I'm, you know, the man knows what's wrong. Right? But it's the reflection, that willingness. And it's also a highly valuable skill that, that is being lost or driven out of people. The ability to just witness, to not give advice, to not pipe in, to try and fix it but to merely be there within the tumults of a man's recognition of his shadow and struggle so that we can celebrate the beauty that's just behind it. The perfection is so close to the surface. You know, it's right behind. Right behind the imperfection is what's glimmering. Right? So we get to witness that with each other. And it is so wonderful that we do and and yeah you know may we be instruments for its continuation um in the ways that are needed for for land spirit and the human being um, you know it's yes. an honor to, 
to walk in this way with you, Maxi. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, towards, um, towards the end, I, I, have, I have a set of questions um, that are they're a little bit, yeah, they're just w what they are. Um, <laughs> and oh, I was, I was, it's been, it's been a while since I was looking forward to ask them to someone um, as, as, as badly as I, as I, as I do right now. So um, right. here we go. Um, what do we need more of, Hunter, in this world? Listening. As is that how we're doing this? One word answers. <laughs> oh, you, 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 you take it where you want. If that's what you want to say, it's listening. Um, yeah, I, I mean, that's where I would begin. Um, we, we need uh, abandonment of polarity thinking of orthodoxies of most kind. Um, <laughs> we need the ability to be in witness of one another, you know, in a in a true way, in a radically honest way. Um, we need to seek out, I want to see more brave spaces than safe spaces, so-called. Um, mm. we, uh, we need to examine, the we need to study history, even immediate history, right? What happened in the past three years, people, all right? Today is 20, this is 2023. Right? Almost the end. We need to look at ourselves, what moved through us, what moved with us, what moved against us in this recent history. History in general is needed. And recent history should not be disregarded when it is so pivotal. This is part of knowing how to show up for the solution and utilizing it as a prayer and to witness it, just look at it. What just happened on a planetary scale? And this is not to go down on conspiracy theories and wormholes. It's to merely look at how it played out in our lives. How did we develop over the past three years? I think there needs to be a lot of that. And examining how we can show devotion to self in relationship to responsibility you know um within within the worlds of biohacking there's a lot of devotion to self-care but can we reframe it in a deeper sense of service of what's needed do we make the vessel strong and whole to serve what there needs to be more of that because the embodiment realm is also filled with uh, mechanized Western dissection, rudimentary thinking. And so we need to be careful in defining things, overly defining things like embodiment, like brotherhood. We need to remain in a flexible listening state as we create, as we gather, as we continue to unfold, to be careful to not say, this is what it is, but to begin to organize and in the sacred sons do this beautifully to create these pillars within our lives, these places of refinement. And can we always with deep supplication and deep authenticity aim towards being helpful? We need a lot of that on the planet, you know? we period right um that's you it. know i could go on and on that's a that's a <laughs> you gotta ask me that one <laughs> we need um oh man so <laughs> well well we i got another one but it's what we need less of <laughs> what do we need less of <laughs> you know obviously we need less we need less instant gratification we need less shallow dives into knowledge uh, um, foundations. We need less food, less taking, 
less shame, less, I don't know, man. We just need less <laughs> hatred, you know? It's like, fuck, man. You know, the other day I'm like, I can't even believe the motivation of some. It's like unfathomable to me, right? It's like, how do we get less of that? My job is to add warmth, to add, so to pull away, to make less, you know? Maybe I, I can, you know, it's, it's overwhelming to look, think of it on a global scale. What do we need less of? Basically everything. And, you know, I don't think we need less people. I think that's actually false. Uh, <laughs> right. We just, we just need to, we need to nurture people in a different way. Um, we need less rhetoric. We need less division. Um, particularly in with regards to what I said we need more of is an evaluation of self over the past three years, how we gravitated towards cultural polarities, you know, what in us was motivated, what was at play, um, you know, in order that we can find a greater unity, a greater conversation about the commons, the commonality, uh, and to, and to create works from that place of inspiration. Um, mm. Yes, sir. Beautiful. Um, yeah. What it, What are you proud of? Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm. I'm proud of of how I've continued to show up when it's hard. Um, I'm proud of throwing off the shackles of my own orthodoxy to find something new within myself that allowed an amalgamation. It wasn't to get rid of something, but to organize myself in a new way that allowed the birth of a fuller expression based on the foundation of who I am. And so I'm really proud of that. I feel very masterful in these spaces. I'm very proud of my children. They're like good people, you know? Um, they're, uh, you know, they're, they're doing their thing in their own way. Um, and uh, I'm proud of the Sacred Sons. Man, these earbuds. I'm not proud of my, my technology performance <laughs> with these earbuds. I'm going to have to remedy that. This is my first time use, people. Um, I'm I'm, yeah, I'm proud of the Sacred Sons. I'm proud of the relationships that I have fostered through that, that <clears throat> have had growth edges and continue to grow. Um, I'm proud of you, Maxi, mm. for completing your journey as you set it up and moving into the the future with a sense of courage and wonder and um, grief. Because, you know, something is, you know, grief. I'm proud of my relationship to grief and how it's evolved uh, and what a vital part of my life it's become. Yeah, and I'm proud of uh, I'm proud of the songs I wrote over the past two years. I have to say, I I cataloged them the other day, and I've got a I've got uh, 13 tracks or 13 mm. songs that were, you know, I'm proud of the relationship that led to those songs coming, which was in a new and a totally different way that I've ever approached uh, song writing. Yeah, I'm proud that it's plenty. Uh, wow, I'm still here, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is plenty. Gosh, so you don't know what kind I'm, of can of worms you're opening with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh man, I'm here for it all. It's just yeah, I just really enjoy listening to you. It's it it, it is like that. It's just um yeah you offer you offer a lot you put a lot on the communal table uh for many people to take what they need and that's 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 beautiful it's nourishing um all right last one what are you looking forward to looking forward to uh going to maui in a few weeks really looking forward to that it's kind of like my annual gift to self and a way to deepen in with the community there and, and the sacred sun's happenings there 
And then, yeah, looking forward to, you know, big 2024, going to Australia with the Sacred Sons. Um, be my first time going there. It's been uh, 30 years since I was in the Southern Hemisphere, actually. Um, and uh, also really looking forward to Florida. I'm going to be there in January. I've really found a, there's a magic spot we go to, you know. Um, I feel like Florida has been really besmirched in a, in a way. Um, that is is not true it's a beautiful place and so we have a big emx coming up there looking forward to that looking forward to growing my community here in seattle and digging in deeper here um with the brotherhood that's formed here and looking forward next time i get to give you a hug <laughs> oh that's beautiful um thank you thank you so much um and yeah um there's something coming up hunter um there's something coming up right now um you you, you got me you 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 let me know how it lands but um how, is there something you wanna i wanna i wanna i wanna give you i wanna give the space um is there something you wanna share um about what your father has introduced um, into your life, something um, that's alive now that he moved on. Yeah, well, the very first thing that came to mind is a love of trains. Uh, he was a he was a fr uh, train engineer for some time. He, he was a freight engineer and then a passenger uh, engineer. I really love trains. He gave me a deep appreciation for uh, black culture um, from, you know, American culture, a well-rounded view and a, a broad view of particularly music, but also uh, literature. Uh, uh, he gave me a good uh, sense of cynicism to overcome and to uh, help me into my shadow work. Um, he, uh, he gave me sensitivity. He really did. He was a sensitive man. And he gave me good context of how I don't want to be. What happens when the lone wolf remains alone for a lifetime. Um, so I really pre, you know, appreciate and I, and I don't take it in vain that he suffered in the way he did and that I can utilize that inheritance to inform something that's nourishing for myself and others yeah mm. thanks deluxe i appreciate you i hope you're comfortable now and chilling in a good spot so my feeling is that he is yeah mm. yeah beautiful that's it at the crossroads we fly that's <laughs> it i thank you so much hunter for for sharing what you shared for just being with me for trusting me taking you on this one hour 40 minute ride um and yeah it's just like um you've introduced a lot a lot a lot to me a lot a lot of stuff that i a world that i have not um that i haven't been introduced to uh, many compartments within myself i haven't accessed um and you you've brought them to the surf you just opened the door i walked through them myself but you opened them and for that i'm, I'm forever grateful so um yeah i wanted to tell you that and looking forward You're to, welcome, to hug you too <laughs> yeah thank you so much for having me um yeah it's been a beautiful conversation you know it's, it's good food for me and um, i'm noticing i've done a couple podcasts so i'm being more and more uh vulnerable with them so it felt good i felt really mm. safe in this space and um beautiful yeah, beautiful to connect with you so thank you for the invitation and the technologies involved those who gave to bring it yeah. absolutely anytime um all right anything um anywhere like i will do the housekeeping as usual i will let people know where they can find you something something you want to point them towards specifically what what what's alive for you right now yeah what feels alive is if you feel drawn 
don't hesitate to set up a consultation. It's just a simple connection. Um, you know, if you, can we learn to just follow that initial impulse to have a conversation? It's not a commitment to anything. Um, HunterTorin.com is where you can find me, uh, AKA also known as Levity Therapeutics in some worlds. Uh, uh, yeah, my website's up there and you know, the Instagram handle is spatial magnetic where I'm not particularly active, but maybe I will decide otherwise hmm. at some point. Um, right. and, uh, yeah. Other than that, move well, you know, people move well, please. Yeah, we will, we will. And, um, looking forward to be guided and, 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 and held and, and, and seen by you and, uh, wit witness you as well. Um, you know, it is all like a co-creation. So thanks again. Um, and greetings to, to Seattle, a place I haven't, I haven't been yet, but will, will hopefully soon, uh, as I'll be back in the U S after, after this trip, you know, I've tasted the waters of the great land. Um, <laughs> beautiful true. turtle islands, a special place. And you always have a roof and a full belly here. So please, mm. anytime. Well, thank you. Thank you.